Hey guys, remember me, Sean Hilton? Yeah, the guy that used to do stand-up comedy here in the Bay Area, San Francisco, mainly Sonoma County, and then uh, went and did some acting, got into some short films, got to be in uh, 13 Reasons Why, season four, uh, The Last Matrix. Uh, you were in some short films, you produced your own short films, Crazy COVID Love and Lust of the Eyes. You got to work and take photography and video shoots with the most beautiful models throughout the Bay Area. You, 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 you got to do, uh, uh, you, you, you got to DP on a few short films. Uh, and, and then you created Funny's Not Dead FND uh, with two produ production companies getting involved with the hundred thousand dollars, ten ten thousand dollars per episode to get that going, and you walked away from it. You done? You done? I'm done. You want to know why I walked away from it? Well, you're gonna have to tune into my new series, Blood Testimonies. I'm gonna share my experience, strength, and hope with you guys about that whole journey and why I'm in an RV in Israel. No, I'm kidding. I'm not in Israel, but yes, I'm in an RV. And yeah, yeah, a lot of you didn't know I was Jewish. Get over it. Uh, no anti-Semitism here. We love one another. I say love one another. Okay. Hey, we'll see you soon. Arkansas. I'm in Arkansas. This guy's from California. What's he doing in Arkansas? The reason why I'm here at this beautiful home that we're going to talk about here in a minute. I want to tell you what I'm going to tell you here uh, regarding who I am a little bit. Get to know me for a minute. So yeah, that was me. The uh, stand-up comic, actor, producer, blah, 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 blah. Almost killed me. That world almost killed me. Oh, well, after you get to know me here for a little bit, you're gonna know why I'm here. And I left California, AKA Sodom and Gomorrah, but Sodom and Gomorrah didn't come with me, nor is it in me. Let's just get that straight now, shall we? All right. Remember, it's commanded to love one another. One another, love. One another. What's so hard about that? Figure it out. So part of getting to know me, you're gonna hear about uh, what Abba has done to bring me out of that world and why a little bit and uh, why I'm in Arkansas. Uh, so my government name is Sean Hilton. That was the actor, stand-up comic, blah, blah, blah. He's dead. I go by Yokanon. It's translation from John. Some of you already know this. Some of you... Hi, I'm Yokanon. And if you have a hard time remembering that, remember, you can put yolk on anything. Yolk's on me. About 11 years ago, I experienced the one of the most horrific, horrible events in my life. And after 18 years of being with this woman, she divorced me and I ended up marrying another woman. And then uh, the enemy wasn't done. Uh, one of my daughters goes bisexual and the other one says, I'm no longer your daughter, I'm trans. Think Michael, I don't know. You know what? Uh, Jonathan Kahn was right on the money about the return of the gods. If you haven't read that book and studied and tested that from experience, oh yeah, they're here. And they are creating a whole lot of havoc and heartbreak. So after the divorce, I did not handle myself well. I wish I can tell you that, like a wonderful friend of mine, Josh. He stood for his marriage, even though it was looking unfavorable, but the 
that warrior, that that stance, I'm gonna do what's right in Abba's eyes regardless of how popular it is. I wish I had done that. We, we don't know if we don't stand and fight with the full armor of God on what will happen to us. We are at war. Let me say that again. We are at war. Some of y'all not taking that serious enough. I've experienced. So I went into old behavior, self-soothing mode. Um, all these abandonment issues from my childhood came up. Um, you know, I was, what, two years old maybe? Four sisters and my mom, one after another, just gone, gone, gone. And, you know, at that age, you don't know what's happening. All I know, having these memories, I'm the baby boy. I was just a baby. And stories of them teaching me how to walk and, and they'd be all in a circle and passing me around. And apparently one of my sisters, Patty, decided it was a good idea to give me a margarita. She was 12 years old. My mom and dad were not stellar like most of us. That's a whole nother story. So instead of seeking God and heavenly counsel and remaining with with people of God to get me through it. I uh, turned to the world. It was like, didn't have this conversation, but it was like, Satan, you know, if you bow to me, I'll give you all of this because I got all of this. Blech. So I won't go into a whole bunch of details because like I said, I put a link down here to episode one of this series where I get raw and detailed and just I hold nothing back and, uh, and I share my experience, strength and hope, and I hope it gives you some strength from watching it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I go in more detail there and what happened, how I went to a comedy show at a place called Sally Tomatoes in Roner Park, California, <clears throat> started watching the comics at different places. And I always had an idea thinking I'm funny, I'm a little funny, but anyways. So, long story short, I start going to comedy clubs and just memorizing and studying these people and how they delivered. I'm getting paid gigs in San Francisco. And if you're able to get a paid gig in San Francisco, guys, you're not doing too bad. So that uh, was quite the ride. And then I met this beautiful woman that I had known in the 12-step world and we got together and started dating and she's an actress and she invites me on set uh, for a short film she was doing uh, I think it was San Jose anyways um, watching the whole process of how they set up the cameras and the angles and they break things up you know and how to make it come together in the edit was just fascinating and everyone was just having a blast on set and I got the acting bug. So uh, my rabbi, Mr. Jeff Quackenbush, does all these headshots for me, makes me look amazing. A uh, bit of a curse though, the people that attracted, but they were good pictures. Here's a couple of them. Kid cleans up quite well. So I immediately uh, start getting acting gigs and, and auditions. Uh, I get put on my casting file, uh, SF Casting, and a few others with this profile with these pictures. And I'm getting cop roles, dad roles, uh, teacher roles. Um, I got to be on season four of 13 Reasons Why. Sorry. But uh, got featured a bunch of times in that, and that was quite the experience. And got to see how big productions companies do it. And, uh, yeah, then... I got to meet and talk with uh, Billy Bob Thornton on his Netflix special, Goliath. I uh, got to be on an episode there as an attorney. Um, but anyways, oh, and then, you know, I get to do this after working with a bunch of models as a photographer and uh, working with actors and producers and writers and all these different people. I came up with this idea to do a... A Bay Area style of 
Saturday Night Live, but again with the Bay Area flair. <laughs> when in Sodom, you do what's in Sodom. But anyways, uh, so FND, Funny's Not Dead, was born. And I got that rolling, and uh, you ever curious on what that looked like? Uh, I, I, I can send you a copy, but um, yeah, so... That started blowing up. I started getting recognition. I started getting produ other production companies on board. Uh, and one of them came up with a, a, a sponsor with $100,000, $10,000 on each episode. And when I got that news that night, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That night, a still small voice came and said, as fast as all this is being built up, it's as fast as it's going to be torn down. Choose this day whom you will serve. Well, for the first time in my life, I experienced the fear of the Lord. <sighs> Shook me to my core. And all I can respond is, what do you want me to do, Abba? What do you want me to do? And as loving and kind and, and humorous as the Holy Spirit is with me, he's all, uh, go back to Shabbat, dude. <laughs> Love you, but come on, you know what to do. Do what you know. Stop self-soothing and seek the Holy Spirit anointing oil to heal you. So I shamad, I responded, and I went back to Hillel Fellowship, uh, where Jeff and Tammy Quackenbush do such an amazing job there running that that fellowship that needs a lot of support if you're in sonoma county please check them out they, they would love to have you they do a great job of going over the tour portions and yeah and and they're online you can always listen to them there too so but anyways it's a little plug for my friends out in sonoma county <sighs> i'm going back to shabbat uh just in time for pesach uh, I get a full cycle, two full cycles in, coming back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> He's brought me out of the mire, you guys. You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea what I survived. <sighs> And those experiences has left me a little changed. I am a little different. <laughs> a little different. Different Mike Tukish. You just straight crazy, but we love him. Harmless as a dove, yes. Then I meet a wonderful man from Africa, Samuel. This is the first messianic believer that i came in contact that is got boots on the ground i mean really just amazing chef and he uh, is at saint vincent de paul's in santa rosa <clears throat> feeding the homeless down there for a while down that kitchen praying that we have favor to buy that building the city is giving us red tape blah 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 May the Holy Spirit bring just judgment to the people that have the final say, yes or nay, if we get that building back. Because there's a lot of people suffering. This is the experience at this point in, in my journey now that I'm back, surrounding my life. Abba introduced me to him. I went down there. I got to be a part of helping them cook. And I did a bunch of videography work for him just to help bring awareness to the ministry. Um, and even though we are two separate entities, he allowed me to be a, be a blessing to me because what the Holy Spirit then at this point helped me see the insanity that I went through. Again, uh, the, the devil doesn't always come at you with you know trials and tribulations and, and heartbreak. That's part of his strategy, but... You know, sometimes, you know, they say he shows up as an angel of light. Sorry, but mine showed up in, 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 in mini skirts and bikinis. It was terrible. 
Okay. Sorry. It allowed me to see how the warfare that we are in, and I'll put a link down below. I did a, a sharing my experience of what this spiritual warfare is about and what it's done to me, and what I've experienced that it's done to the homeless community and the drug and alcohol addicted. It's quite devastating what they're doing out there and the church is asleep and we're going to talk about that. So I have to learn from the master and see him run his kitchen and just the, how he, you know, all the chicken and the sandwiches and the donations that, you know, people were giving around there to help supply the food. Uh, just amazing watch this process. I mean, the barbecuing, all oh, the barbecues were amazing. Everybody looked forward to those. And uh, the staff, man, the, the people there helping, donating their time, volunteering, amazing. Talk about walking out the love of Abba. You know, uh, a couple of them were not believers. Um, one, a couple of them were uh, uh, gay, uh, and the, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, not everybody was a believer. There was a couple, and you, you definitely saw that, but the environment caused, I noticed, in the others, though, to show up and serve with excellence. And uh, they know who they are. And uh, I pray that y'all can get back down in that kitchen and it gets reopened because you guys were so amazing in the relationships that you developed with everybody over the years. They need hope. They need hope so bad. Oh, I, I get this beautiful opportunity given to me to teach a, a spiritual warfare workshop with them. And... What Abba had me do is keep it simple. Uh, got me a, a projector and screen and, and super system and microphone. And we would just watch things off of YouTube. I don't believe in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I think there are some people in any given moment can demonstrate God's glory and it, it shows through. What's wrong is always available but so what is right. I went through as a young man searching for healing and answers. I went through a lot of different seminars, a lot, uh, from Tony Robbins to Zig Ziglar to Les Brown um, and private um, ones like was called Choice for Change for teenagers. And again, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but things that Later on, I'm going to show how I worked with them and what I use the tools for. Absolutely amazing and so effective. And they're tools to help us capture and take every thought captive to the obedience of Yeshua. This was a consistency in every class, every workshop we did. How to take every thought captive. What did that look like? We would discuss and go over tools and techniques and, and we would practice that. There's a couple of clips of, just to kind of give you an idea and I'll give you an in-depth uh, example. asking for, you're just not aware of how general you're asking. Clarity is power. The more clear you are about exactly what it is you want, the more your brain knows how to get there. Your brain is a servo mechanism. It's like a bomb. Those bombs, those missiles, they have a servo mechanism. So if the target moves, it knows what the target is, it follows it. Your brain, when you condition it, knows exactly what to go for and it'll find a way to get there. Do you ever buy a certain outfit or a certain car and suddenly see that car outfit everywhere? How many of you ever had that experience? Say, I. How come that car outfit's everywhere? It always was everywhere, but now you notice it. And the reason is because there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS. That part of your brain determines what you notice and what you don't notice. Your brain spends most of its time trying to make sure you don't notice because you'll go crazy if you notice everything. But when you decide what's most important to you, your brain goes after it. 
Everyone I know who's successful builds what I call an RPM plan. An RPM is built on the metaphor that the way to get from where you are to where do you want to go to the fastest is you've got to build power, like in a car, RPMs. And the R stands for they know the result they're after. They know what they want precisely. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. You've got to know the specific result you're after. What do you want? If you can't answer that question right now in your personal life, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your spirituality, then you're not going to be as fulfilled as you want to be. Today we're going to have you answer one of those questions at least. The second part of it, you've got to know P, why you're doing it. Because you know what? You may get a big goal as soon as I want to make a billion dollars. I want to bring peace to the earth. Why? Because as soon as you come up with a goal, all the obstacles show up. And unless you've got enough emotional drive to break through that, you're never going to discover what it really takes. So you've got to get yourself past that. And the way to get past that is have enough reasons. Reasons come first, answers come second. This man did not know what he wanted. He did not have enough reasons. To ask intelligently, you've got to ask specifically. To ask intelligently, you've got to know why you want it, have enough drive to make it happen, enough juice to make it happen. If you don't have enough reasons, you will not make it happen. And the M is, what is your massive action plan? What is going to get you to actually fall through? Because the first plan's not going to work, and the second plan's going to work, so you better have enough plans that if the first two don't work, you still got something else. Otherwise, you're going to be having excuses why it didn't work. So asking intelligently requires that. So if we're going to be extraordinary in our results, we've got to be in an extraordinary state. We've got to know what we want, and we've got to go... Thank you, Father, for what you are doing. Thank you for bringing me here to Oklahoma. And I'm amazed just a week in to see what you are doing here, Father. And I thank you for everyone that is seeing this, that they, I know, have a heart for the loss. I know that you care about those who do not have a relationship with Yeshua. I know that you are, who are watching want to hear, well done and faithful servant. Sure, do not want to hear, you wicked servant, for hiding your talents. Yeshua gave these parables, and it's time to wake up to them. It's time to be the wise virgins that have their lampstands full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. There are so many people over that year being down there, day, Monday through Friday, uh, working with them. We experience people getting physical healing three times. Three. I experience people's being restored in their right mind. And, and they, uh, I don't know if they were on meth at the moment or what, but it, and it looked like this. They would come in the door and I say, hey, how you doing? And, you know, so-and-so's name. And, and the first time I watched this happen, he's like, I, I can't talk to you right now. I, I, I can't. I, you got to go. I can't stop. I mean, he was being dragged away from me when I'm trying to bring him over to talk with them and pray for him. And I, with my sense of humor and way to redirect those spirits, I have a good way of being able to get back to person within them and, and speak life into them. It's just, it's been a, a, an amazing blessing to watch happen what the father does with that. And what I mean is like, <laughs> as he was walking away, I kind of gave him a few minutes by himself. I think he went to the bathroom and as he comes back out, I'm like, hey, 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 come here, come here, come here, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got something on you. So what, what, what? It's, it's just an unclean spirit. Let me pray for you real quick. And we would pray. And I kid you not, that moment, I saw his countenance, everything in his face and his body language, just, he was taking notes. Three different times I had this experience. The second one that happened, the next day they came in and then this person too, sitting down, participating, asking questions. And the day before, same thing. I can't talk. I can't talk. So a huge need, a huge need. I connected with, our, yeah, I reached out to 55 churches in Sonoma County. 55. I mean, with emails, with detailed information about the ministry and what we were doing, and phone calls, and actually physically showing up, and I, 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 an independent uh, 
preacher pastor out in Guerneville, California. He has a little radio station from the uh, River Theater, the yeah. historic River Theater. We connected and he came out once and uh, prayed and ate with us. And then another time he came out and I actually have a, a link down here where he, he taught uh, instead of me. I was trying to invite everybody in the churches, come help pray with them, help redirect their focus with me. If you do have experience in preaching the gospel, a lot of people don't. I'm serious, it's sad. People can't lead people through the, the feasts of the Lord and how the menorah is the works of the plan of salvation and how to explain that. So, other than that, I had uh, another guy named Fred, and I'm really grateful for him. He goes to a church called the Promise Center, and an old friend of mine, Chadwick King, runs that church. Uh, he's doing an amazing job. He's really good at getting people to the foot of the cross, and uh, I applaud him for that. And, uh, yeah. Otherwise, out of all that 55, zero help. So what did I learn over that, uh, that year with them? That repetition is the mother of skill. They need people that can stand with them, repetitionally helping them redirect their focus because guys, these spirits that we're at war with, I mean, I can literally not physically see the demons, but I can literally see how they are affecting the mind and body in any given moment. It's not pretty. It's terrifying to watch if you don't have the fullness of the Ruach that you stand in the gap as a warrior for them and not be afraid. I have had my life threatened. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's make this a little kind of funny, not funny. It, it, one thing about stand-up comedy, y'all, you've you got to learn to read the room and know your crowd. Uh, so this was a big learning lesson. <laughs> well, I try to use my humor to lighten things up, and I go, hey, guys, I, I just found out uh, a little revelation here that the, there's not going to be any women in heaven. Open Revelations, I think it was 8-1. Uh, and the land opened up the seventh seal and there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Now, I thought it was kind of funny. Most people find that funny, but a demon spoke to them at the same time, three guys at the very same moment. And dude, they stood up. You're trying to say my mama's not in heaven. No one said nothing about their mama. I don't, but you know what? Again, these demons are just. Yeah, so they all F your revelation. That joke ain't funny. I mean, they just, yeah, they were ready to throw me off the cliff and stone me. It was pretty intense. Uh, my, my first day there, uh, down at the kitchen, I remember a guy comes up to me and he's all, what are you here for? What, what, what's, what's your story? My story, I, you know, I didn't really expect that kind of question, didn't know what to say. And what flew out of my mouth was a learning experience. I'm, oh, I, I, I'm a minister. I'm, I'm here to kind of help out and see where I can be of service and pray with anybody. And demon just jumped at him. Why does it got to be religion? It's always with Why does it got to be religion with you people? All right, and he just starts. Oh, F this and you son of a that. And I, I mean, it got ugly. Um, I had a knife pulled on me. And yeah, it's, uh, I understand why people might be a little nervous about getting into the homeless ministry because you never know what kind of flavor you're going to get that day. You never know what uh, cocktail they had in their body recently or the night before, if because of that they were able to sleep at all. And then add hunger to that, add the voices in your head that are telling you, you deserve this, you're never going to amount to anything. You are some piece of work. Your mom and daddy was right, man. You weren't worth nothing. Your situation never gonna change. Nobody cares about you. If they loved you and cared, man, especially the church, 
why aren't they here doing something? Too busy trying to get numbers and people to fill their seats in their building instead of going out and being in their church. I have held some of the community in my arms as they are just melting in defeat, not knowing how to overcome and stop the insanity. Uh, I tried different avenues. I'm like, all right, so let's get some of my old friends in the comedian world uh, together and I'll put on a comedy show and, and raise funds that way. And uh, we did that and that was a lot of fun. Uh, down but not out comedy show and uh, you know we we got I think up to 20 people sleeping bags tarps tents and uh, battery banks and all kinds of things that from that but nothing from the churches nothing 55 churches and we got more from the secular world that don't go to church thank you Steve Bruner thank you John Lear so back to it repetition being the mother's skill and what's important as uh, they shut down that kitchen i went in to be uh, a house manager for a sober living environment um, i went there thinking because the owners were christian that i was going to be able to pray and do bible studies and but um, as soon as that was found out uh, i got chastised by one of the owners uh, i gotta pray for this guy uh, He's got a good intent and good heart to want to save lives, but he's doing it through the world. And, and the way he's doing it, I mean, we, we had somebody relapse, OD and die. Uh, and there are things that I've learned if we'd done things God's way and allowed that, we would have saved his life. When that door shut, and the kitchen is now closed. I'm like, Lord, what do I do? Where am I? What do you want me to do? I mean, it seems like the enemy's really got a stronghold shutting doors down right now. And I heard this whisper to Shuva homes. One of the things that I have taught to our, our community is that we have to live a life of repentance, live a life into Shuva. Parting, putting on the armor of God and taking every thought captive is cutting off the sin that easily besets us. And if we had an environment where the Ten Commandments is the standard, oh, wait a minute, what, what would that do? So here's the vision. In, in this home here, out of many that we're going to do, each home is going to be different and have different needs tailor made. And uh, when I'm like, for instance, this is going to be for the orphans and the fatherless and the widows. So here in this area for this, this function, we're going to need, I, I know that people here in the Bible Belt are not going to be cold asleep like Santa Rosa was. We have an opportunity here with what we're doing and creating a Torah-based living environment where they get to learn how to apply the commandments in their life. What does it really mean to have no other gods before me? Uh, Jim Staley does a really great uh, series on the Ten Commandments that I showed at the uh, 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 in Santa Rosa down at the kitchen. and. You know, when they started learning the history, the language, and the culture to really get a fuller understanding context, their faith in them just rose. You can see their confidence, not their own, but from the Holy Spirit, because it confirms when truth and spirit are brought together. Uh, I love my friend Chad, he said, and this is common now, I hear it, but I heard this decades ago, he would say, if you have all word, you dry up, all spirit, you blow up, word and spirit, we grow up. And we're called to maturity. Balancing love and grace and truth together. Remembering that love is the heartbeat that all of the Torah hangs on. I'm a big believer. And you gotta be slow and kind and enduring and patient in this ministry. But when you do it from that love chapter 
1 Corinthians 13. When we walk out being patient and kind and long-suffering. No boastfulness, no pride. Just how can I be of maximum service to this individual that's being bound by the enemy? Creating a mindset of gratitude consistently. How can I be of ser- maximum of service today? And it's one of the good things that, uh, again, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, step arena and, and the 12 steps and, and principles and traditions are great, but unfortunately it's not led by the one true God like it used to be. The whole movement of God of your own understanding is, you know, the enemy's really plowed into that. And uh, so I've learned that what the church was not doing as like a hospital for the community, the homeless community down there at the kitchen, watching that in the secular world of 12-step meetings and treatment centers, halfway houses, the biggest thing that's not there is Devarim Elohim, the words of God in spirit and truth and that being the focus i know because the promises of god that if we do this together healing and blessings we're going to fold out of this tremendously i want to hear well done and faithful servant don't you